We will now uh, like to move on to the next special lecture. The speaker will be Professor Isaac Kaplan from Israel. Professor Kaplan will be introduced by Chairperson Professor Yoshiki Hiki. Thank you very much. Now, we would like to open the next special lecture. I'm Dr. Hiki from Kitasato University. And uh, first of all, it is my great pleasure to introduce world well known Professor Isaac Kaplan, the uh, Tel Aviv University. As you know, he's a, an authority on the field of laser surgery and medicine. Now he is only life president of this society, I am. ISLMSS. He was born in South Africa in 1919 and qualified in medicine at Johannesburg, South Africa. In 1952, immigrated to Israel and uh, then he completed specialist training in general surgery in Jerusalem. In 1955, he trained in plastic surgery in England and 58, he established and uh, headed the Department of Plastic Surgery, Reconstructive Surgery, and Maxillofacial in Israel. He received many outstanding honor and award, not only Israel, but also from the entire world, namely Denmark, Argentina, Paraguay, Beijing, China, Cuba, India, United States, and also Japan. He published many original articles and not a lot of the books in his field. So now we would like to ask Professor Kaplan to begin his lecture entitled The History of the Laser History uh, Surgery. Professor Kaplan, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I wrote about the history of the CO2 laser and decided that the article was not quite a chair razor. So I thought about it for some time. I thought about it for some time, then decided to rewrite the whole thing in rhyme. So to Professor Shiro and your committee, we meet again in this great city. This is our third meeting in Japan, and I am delighted that to attend it I can. And you are now well aware, I beg you with me to, sh to bear, because I intend to talk in rhyme, as I have done many a time. The subject of my talk will be the CO2 laser in surgery, because you kindly invited me to talk about history. And my involvement with this laser is no mystery. So it's history and surgery I intend to present because that is where most of my time is spent. Now, early in 1972, I started to see what one could do with the CO2 laser as a surgical knife and have continued to do so for the rest of my life. But in order to do this, I had to produce an apparatus which would be of friendly use. So with engineer Sharon and no time to lose, we produced the Sharplin laser, which was easy to use. It soon became obvious that there was no doubt what its advantages in surgery was all about. Its application in surgery is quite unique since it enables one to operate with a non-touch technique and to perform an incision with absolute precision while reducing bleeding and post-operative pain which with simultaneous sterilization an advantage again. Debulking of tissue is no longer an issue because a defocused beam can do it with ease 
and you can vaporize as much as you please. I then started to introduce it in every surgical field in order to see what results it would yield. So by 1975, when the ISLSM was founded, its use in various surgical specialities abounded. As the inaugural meeting, the specialities represented, in all of which the advantage of the laser were presented, were plastic surgery, head and neck, ENT, oncology, thoracic and cardiac surgery, orthopedics and urology. General, experimental, hand surgery and gynecology, then my time I started to devote the laser in surgery to promote. For this purpose I traveled all over the earth, lecturing, demonstrating and teaching what the laser was worth. At the same time, I kept maintaining a facility for those who required training. As a result, laser surgery was introduced to the USA, to Taiwan, Brazil, Japan, the Argentine, France and the UK, to Germany, Denmark, Sweden, Italy, Austria, Mexico and Peru, to Belgium, Egypt, Jordan, Korea and Vietnam too to Greece, Colombia, Russia and Uzbekistan, to Turkey, Venezuela, Poland and Kazakhstan, to Australia, New Zealand and Singapore, to Canada, South Africa, Cuba and more. Like India, Paraguay, Switzerland and China, in some the impact was major, in some merely minor. Although originally it was not my intention that I think that it's worthy of mention that I never charged to teach because the Hippocratic Oath uh, it would breach. Not a single share do I hold in the company through which the lasers are sold. The ISLM meets every two years and some meetings are, are organized with blood and tears. So for 34 years it managed to survive and even to grow and to thrive. It became the main source of the gospel to spread, not only in laser surgery where all is done and said, but also in biostimulation where Mester presented his work in 75, which was followed by LLLT, which managed to flourish and not merely survive. Now let me offer my thanks and greetings to those who hosted our previous meetings, to Aronoff, Hepner, Atsumi, Hofstetter and Kao, Nimsakul, Chaparro, Yuri, Asher and Rao to Scott, Beckman, Cato, Longo and, and now the incumbent president to whom I bow. As the CO2 laser became universally used, other high-powered lasers were introduced and misused because in order to promote sales, potential users were misled so far from encouraging lasers in surgery, they were being discredited instead. Some manufacturers recommended their lasers for surgery, a recommendation that was tantamount to perjury. A recommendation that was tantamount to perjury. So when acquired with surgery as the goal, disappointment led to dis discrediting the laser for surgery as a whole. So I found myself running from meeting to meeting to prevent people from trying to use lasers for the purpose they weren't meant. Laparoscopic cholecystectomy with a KTP is a 
an example where that laser should never be. Later I hope to present a paper which will show what is meant as the use of the CO2 laser became a, a fait accompli, papers on its use at meetings became difficult to see. Until it's of its use in cosmetic surgery, they became aware, with the result that it, at meetings, little else was there. The programs were full of the treatment of wrinkles, while everything else appeared in sprinkles. As one of these meetings, my opinion was sought. So I said that if Churchill was there, he would have thought that never in the history of medicine have so many said so much about naught. All sorts of modified lasers and scanners were offered for sale, claiming that with them predictability and safety would prevail. This reminded me that over 20 years before, Nimsicle and I reported this procedure performed by hand and no more. I was asked, the scanner you use, what is its make? I don't need a scanner, I said, because my hands shake. And so, when all is said and done, for surgery, the CO2 laser is the one. While I show you a film I would like you to see, it was made when laser surgery was in its infancy. So that is really part of history it was made 35 years ago. Can we show the film, please? 